Can you really get edible tomatoes off a plant this badly affected by blight? Yes, and I'm going to show you how. Well, I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure I've got blight. So this is the first time I've done tomatoes down here. And you can start to see that some of the leaves are starting to look a little bit discolored. Um, but I think the biggest giveaway is actually these little marks on the stem. Um, now, this particular plant seems to be the worst affected. You can see here that um, this seems to be the most affected. There's two particular plants here. As they start to move up, the tomatoes actually, some of them are not too bad at all, all the way right up to the top. And unfortunately, these ones here are actually my galenas, which are the uh, I think they're the earliest fruiting ones. Uh, but you can see here how bad the blight is. At least I'm pretty sure it's blight. I've never had blight before. Um, but there's certain things that tell me it is one that's just how quick that's gone. Um, that's kind of two days worth of uh, it progressing. And you can see kind of how sparse uh, the leaves are at the bottom. It suggests that they're the ones that are kind of rotted off the most. And they always say it starts in the bottom. I'm just coming on to the other side just to see and you can actually see here that it seems to be a little bit less actually but you can still see if I move into the middle here where there's still quite a lot but also believe it or not there is some yellow tomatoes deep down in there and if you can see them there they are they're just starting to go yellow these are galenas so they're meant to be yellow so um I'm in two minds to take that truss and see if I can ride it at home. Might give it a go before it gets too badly affected. But we shall, we shall see. I think the big learning of this year is that um, these were the most sprawling ones that I put in first. And I've got to be honest, I probably didn't really prune them as well as I could have done. If we look towards the bottom here, we can actually see where the side shoots have kind of come out. I think that's been my problem because they're actually still touching the ground. So let's see, let's remove some of the leaves and let's see how this progresses over the next couple of days. So here goes, let's remove some of these. Side sheet there. Let's see whether this is going to make any difference. It's weather. See down here that some of these have been only mildly affected so I might be able to get away with some of this. I suppose this is the test isn't it? You can actually see here that annoyingly one of the best trusses I've actually got blight on there. I'm going to have to take that off. Which is really, really annoying. But that's there it goes. I think the lesson next year is make sure that I keep on top of any of the initial pruning. I think that just comes off in your hand, doesn't it? So here we are, two weeks later, 
and I'm actually really impressed. We can see here that uh, the blight hasn't really progressed. And I'm not so sure if that's down to it being less wet or whether it's be drier or hotter. It's certainly been drier and hotter. Um, but we can see here, if we kind of move a little bit closer, that we can see that obviously there's still some blight leaves on there, but there are fruits on here and the fruits, the tomatoes are growing. And even though some have got blight on, which we can see down there, this yellow galena has got no blight at all and it's touching, you know, a blight infected tomato. So I'm really quite impressed really, we've managed to get some fruits out of it. Um, these are the blight resistant primabellas and, and these are actually touching blight infected plants to the left hand side um, and they're carrying on very little blight on them but the, the fruits, the tomatoes are looking amazing. Um, so really impressed all around, we're going to actually get some tomatoes. So I've left my blight, uh, blight affected plants in and you can see there's some here that's got blight and then there's some here that haven't. I have that one uh, and you can see here some that have, so even next to each other, blight, not blight, have those. Um, oh, here you can see. Pretty good. Good sweetie tomato. And you can kind of see blight. No blight. So these are definitely split. See so blight tomato. No blight tomato. This one. Over here with the galenas, you see some of these are a little bit of blight on it. No blight whatsoever. You can see here that some of them have definitely got blight on, some of them haven't. So they're coming here. Look at this, my boy. See, everything touching. It's really weird. See, just a little tiny bit maybe on there. It's so strange. So we're back home. And as you can see here, we've actually got some tomatoes, my blight infected tomato plants. Uh, we've got some yellow galenas and some orangey sun golds, which were really badly affected. Um, and we've also got some Elsa Craig and a Moscovich there, I think. Um, it just goes to show that actually doing some pruning, um, leaving the plants to grow a little bit actually, has really paid dividends. We've actually probably got about 10% of the fruit that I thought we'd get from the, from the plants, and there's still more to come. Here we have uh, the Primabella, so these really are truly blight resistant. These are just powering through, looking beautiful. I'm expecting a lot more from the Primabella plant. They're actually touching in a really quite badly infected sun gold plant. And they're, they're still, you know, kind of creating a lot of fruit. We've probably got five or six more trusses on each of the plants of Primabellas to come. So my recommendation here would be that, you know, certainly blight resistant plants will definitely give you much better yield. But even if you do get blight, you know, not all is lost, don't rip them all up. Do some pruning, try and remove as much of the blight away as you can, and then just carry on growing the fruit. And even if on some of those trusses where we had maybe eight uh, tomatoes, maybe you might get two that are not infected, even if they're on the same truss as ones that are really badly infected. If you found this interesting, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It would really help us out a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time.